Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today your project comes to us that's uh, an inherited reel that uh, one of our viewers has that uh, dates back to 1992. It's a Shimano Bantam Corrado, and we're going to uh, service this one. Uh, the problem with the reel uh, is that it is missing the pawl cap, and they did provide the uh, pawl. Uh, but they show the broken cap in here as well and uh, unfortunately with the 1992 reel the uh, parts are no longer available. Hey the reel is 20, 25 plus years old uh, but they asked me if I could clean it up, tune it up and possibly find uh, the piece or the part. So I did get lucky. I uh, went on to the traditional sites that you would go on to for the Shimano parts and confirmed that you can't get this as a replacement part but I did notice in there that there was a couple of substitute parts. One of them, interestingly enough, belonged to this reel, the uh, Bantam uh, Magnolite. And I was able to get a donor reel on uh, eBay uh, that had the Paul cap. So uh, we're going to take this apart, clean this reel. We're going to take that, uh, that replacement cap and Paul. We'll put that all back together and hopefully we'll have a nice reel that uh, uh, either becomes part of a collection that's it's been passed down or it uh, goes fishing again. Uh, either way, uh, we'll get this one back into service. So let's, uh, let's start by taking off the, uh, the exterior pieces to this and we'll tune up the gear side. The, uh, the non-gear side is pretty interesting. It has a, uh, a little lever here and uh, you pull down the lever and then you unscrew and that pulls the, the lever cap off and there's really nothing to do on this side of the reel other than make sure that this bearing is turning. I use a little screwdriver just to do that and just once you determine that the bunk bearing is functional all you really have to do is oil that. There's nothing else going on here. So uh, if you oil it and you put it back on, when you go to put it back on make sure all of these brakes are tight to the inside of the spool here that's a common problem with bait casters is those little brakes fall off and uh, it's not a problem so much that uh, if you don't have the brake it's just that if you take uh, take a couple of those pieces off the spool will uh, uh, roll more freely but the, um, the downside on it is those things usually fall off inside the mechanism and clog the reel and cause, uh, cause operational issues. Okay let's take this off then we're going to start by taking off the the little nut cap there that's held on by a screw. Once you disconnect the screw we have the nut underneath it that should be a 10 millimeter nut and you can see in the background here I've actually pulled the schematic to this reel. Um, schematics are good particularly if you don't know the reel you can see all the burst diagrams where the pieces and parts go and should you need to reorder a piece or a part the codes are on the bottom of these reels and this is where I learned that this reel is a 1992 reel um, and it is part of their Bantam series but testimony to them it's a 1992 reel it's been around for 25 plus years and still working um, parts are the problem on this one but uh, again I was able to find a substitute part on eBay and I would tell you if you're out there and you can't find uh, pieces and parts don't necessarily give up on them try eBay as a source there are a lot of, are a lot of folks that uh, get these parts reels cannibalize them sell the pieces and the parts on uh, eBay so take off that 10 millimeter nut the handle comes next I put these into a parts tray just so I know where all those pieces and parts belong as many of you know I do wear a protective glove on my uh, non-working hand folks have asked why don't I wear one on my working hand and quite honestly I just haven't found one that I'm comfortable with that gives me the sensitivity to work the pieces and the parts uh, without dropping them and, and the like so uh, you'll notice also that I'm holding the star adjuster right now that's because it's spring loaded so when you take this off there's going to be a spring underneath it as there is and I just want to make sure that you know where these pieces and parts go so that diagram there is one good way to do it another good way to do it is uh, kind of what we're doing here isn't it uh, you take pictures so I've got a video running here that will tell me the way that I took the uh, pieces and parts off from a sequence standpoint uh, you can also take pictures along the way with a cell phone camera or a digital camera I guess you could actually take one with a film camera and go get them developed but that 
probably is not a viable alternative there. And I like to lay these out before I uh, put them into my parts bin so I know I have the nut goes next and then the, the, the flat washer. Then these two washers are what I call nested washers. They're not flat washers. They have a curve to them. These are for the tensioning on the uh, star adjuster nut, make it more sensitive or less sensitive. You can nest them they, where they pretty much act like a, f a flat washer. You can go face to face with these to give it a little bit more tension and you can go back to back on these where you can see the spacing becomes uh, more significant and that requires a little bit more uh, pressure to push these down to fully engage and it's all about the sensitivity of the, uh, the star adjuster. Uh, pick your personal preference. This one has um, an anti-reverse bearing which is nice for an older reel and we have four side plate screws to keep the side plate on now so I'm going to take those off. I'm going to use a little micro screwdriver here. It's a uh, Phillips head and when you take these out before I put these in a bucket I like to lay these side by side after I take them out of each hole just to notice in case one of those screws happens to be longer than the others and it's not unusual because of the way that these cases are made that sometimes one does wind up longer so the Bantam series has been around a long time it's a great little low profile bait caster uh, can be used bass fishing can be used uh, oh, there we go as we're talking here, that third screw that belongs on the bottom is longer. Um, and um, nice little flipper reel. And one that's lasted for the amount of time that it has uh, in this condition, always a good sign. All right, so we have one screw that's longer than the others. You can see it there, the one is longer than the other. I've made a note that it belongs on the bottom position of the reel. And now I can take those screws and put those back into my parts tray. With that done now, I should be able to remove the side plate. Yep, comes right off. And uh, here's your internal look. Now, one of the first things I do when I work on bait casting reels is I get, uh, get the springs off right away. These two little springs here that uh, act for the free spool release, uh, if I don't take those off, they tend to shoot. So. Um, Get them off, put them in your parts tray before you do anything else. And that includes testing the trip lever. So if we go to test the trip lever now, we'll go push that down. You can notice that it pushes the whole assembly down and it uh, moves out the spool gear. That will enable the spool over here to ride freely. And then when you turn, now we've got a little trip lever over on this side. We have a trip lever that's going to push all of that back up. Like it just did there, you can see the trip lever now that it's uh, removed. <laughs> and if you left those springs on while you were doing that test, uh, chances are they're in the next zip code by now. Okay, we got a little bit of dirt and it uh, and looks like rust or browning going on on this wheel. So I'm going to pull that, that first furrow off there. I'm going to clean that up. And I don't expect to find anything bad in here. I wasn't hearing any noises or anything. Just seems like this just needs a good cleaning uh, and I use a uh, cotton swab for the insides, use the paper towel for the outsides, go put it back on the uh, rack there. I'm going to pull next off, we're going to pull the, the drag washers off and the main gear. Just going to go clean up some of the older grease that's on this reel behind it. I'm going to clean it up some of the hard to get places with that cotton swab. Now you don't need to, in the general servicing of the reel, if you just did those tests that I did, the free spool is actu actu uh, actuating properly, the uh, throw mechanism is working, so you just want to do a visual on this thing, you can clean it if you needed to, uh, for example if you wanted to take the, the spool gear assembly out, that simply lifts off with the yoke and the spool gear. If you do that, remember that the, the spool gear has two sides on it. One is notched and one is smooth. The notched side goes to the spool. Uh, you don't need to do much here. If it's clean like this, all you have to do is make sure that it's properly oiled. And I prefer oil on these moving parts as opposed to um, grease because grease can build up contaminants in there and just um, become problematic. 
I do like to put grease on the teeth of the uh, spool gear and we'll do that right now so long as I have this assembly out. I use a, uh, a pen precision reel grease but any fishing reel grease will do. Uh, my recommendation is do not use substitutes. Use use greases that were designed for fishing reels. Uh, there's a lot of multi-purpose grease out there, white lithium and all those other things, uh, general household grease. Spend the, the two or three dollars that it costs for fishing reel grease and, and don't create any problems that you don't need to, to deal with later. It's the same thing with the oils. Folks want to use like three-in-one oil and things like that. I would just tell you go ahead and uh, get the, the fishing reel oil. In this case, here's a real X oil. Uh, Penn makes an oil. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to have the manufacturer's specific oil, but make sure that you have an oil designed for fishing reels. Okay, I've, I've lubed that up. Next thing I'm doing is I'm checking all of the teeth on these plastic gears. This one drives the worm gear. This one is the transition gear that operates off of the crank. And we're just going to make sure that um, that all of the teeth are there and that they're meshing free and easy. They're, they are. I'm just kind of using a pick to do that, but you can certainly just turn it with the shaft as well. And while you're doing that, you want to make sure that the, the worm below is turning, which it is. Because remember, we had the pole missing, so you won't see the line guide going yet. But you do want to make sure that that's there. And once you do that, you can go ahead and put some fresh grease, just a, a little bit on a few of the teeth on those plastic gears. You don't need to fill every one because as you spin this it's going to get to lube everything else. Okay on the bottom then the next thing up then was the uh, the ratchet which is going to trip off of this and again we can just do that as an illustration when you push down on the release that's going to throw this arm over. Unfortunately I didn't uh, and get it set yet. This is going to push the arm up like that and that's going to release it. So let me get it back on the post before I do that. Okay, now with it on the post. Now you can see how it sets in there and then as you turn the reel this little tooth is going to push that up just like I did manually and that's how this is working. Okay, next up is just a little hard fabric washer that goes in there. And now we can look at that drag washer, make sure that that's okay. So I'm taking off the, the pressure plate. Now I'm just looking for a uh, utility knife to pull that washer out with. And this is a fabric washer. It's, uh, it's in good shape. There's no fraying going on here. So whatever kind of fishing may have been done with this reel, it certainly wasn't abusive type fishing. Uh, by any means. And then what we'll do now is we'll just grab a little abrasive. In this case it's a kitchen scrubby. And just clean out that channel here. Looks like there's some tarnish on here, probably from some dried grease. But uh, that's not pitting or anything, so that's fine. And we can also put a little bit of grease now onto that washer. I'm going to use a Cal's Universal Dry Grease for this. And the purpose of this is just to keep the, the washer flexible. It doesn't add anything in terms of max drag or anything. And with this gloved hand now, I can rub those lubricants right into the, the washer. And then I can remove any excess with a paper towel. And I'm not getting it on my hand in the process. So that's how you service the drag washer in this one. If you needed to replace that drag washer, the drag washers are still available. If you wanted to go to Carbon, carbon Tex, you could do that as well. Uh, in this case, I don't believe that's necessary, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in. Now, we already put some grease on the spool gear. Let's put just a little bit more on a few spots on the teeth on the main gear here. And again, because of the difference in circumferences of the, um, the two gears, they'll work that grease around over time. All right, put the pressure plate back in, and we can take the furl there, get that in the the holes and that's the inside of the reel. So last thing we need to do, we saw that there's a little bit of uh, kind of brown carryover. I don't know if that's rust or dried grease or what it is. You can see it on the back of the Q-tip. We're going to go clean that anti-reverse out. And just put a little bit of oil into the 
the bearings there. You don't need a lot, and those are spring-loaded bearings, so uh, no big deal there. Okay, then we can reinstall the case after we put those two springs on. That's the beauty of a, a parts tray there, is ready to put the case on. I just looked over to the parts tray and realized, hey, wait a minute now. We're missing the, uh, the springs for the release of the free spool. Okay, now we can put the main, main case back on. Should just snap in, which it did. I can give it a quick test drive before I even go put any screws on now. Make sure everything's working. Last thing you want to do is go button it, button the reel up, and then find out that you didn't have the screws. Right. Now remember, we took the screws off. There's three that are one size, and there's one that's longer. So you want to separate them, and we know that the long one went below into the reel seat. So let's go put that one in first, so we don't. Uh, Put them in correctly, and we can tighten this back up. So this uh, this reel, 25 years old, nice technology. It had the anti-reverse, one of the first uh, in terms of using that clutch bearing there. It uh, it's a nice solid reel. It turns easy, and uh, this one's going. We're going to put the pawl in next. We'll show you how to do that from that uh, that donor reel, and then uh, this, I believe this reel should be back out fishing in no time. Okay, that's in. Then the next step too were those two tension washers, and again they were nested for uh, uh, the way we found them. So let's make sure we put them back that way. And again, if you wanted to play with the tension on this thing, you could certainly uh, make the change. There's nothing wrong with doing that, and that's why they were designed the way that they are. So if you don't like the way that the the star adjuster has in terms of sensitivity, try moving that around a little bit. A lot of these reels have those, uh, like the Abus and some of the others have those types of adjusters. Okay, next on is the nut here. Now that nut is what's actually going to do the, the tensioning on the, the drag, and you'll see that there's a square insert in the back of the star uh, adjuster here that's spring-loaded. Uh, so we're going to put that in next. And you don't have to tighten that all the way down. I know I used the 10 millimeter nut before, or 10 millimeter wrench to take that off. You don't have to. The, the star adjuster is going to work that way. All right, so now we're going to have to press down on this. And you want to seat this with the over the nut. And make sure that you get it properly seated. That's properly seated. And then kind of a balancing act here, because of the handle has to go on. You want to hold the tension on the, uh, the two forks on that uh, star adjuster. Not always easy in terms of hand, hand strength, but you can do it. Tighten that down with your hand as much as you can, and then use your 10 millimeter wrench. To just kind of square that up. And then we have our nut cap, and that's the rebuild on the inside of this reel. So the only piece left then is that pawl assembly. And it looks like I didn't quite get the, the nut tight enough. You have to play around with it because there's a certain level that it grips at. There we go, we got it now. Okay, we'll give this a quick turn just to make sure it's working fine, which it is. Okay, so back here now, I, I got that pole cap. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then this will be restored and it will be ready to go fishing again. Okay, we have the pole. Check when you get poles, make sure that the forks on them are equal, that there's not damage to them. There's a little copper washer inside this cap. It is actually a separate part. It just happens to be laying on the bottom of the cap right now. Take a little bit of oil and a drop of oil on the pole helps it to spin easily. Make sure that that little copper washer is inside your cap. And then we can go, hopefully we can go install this cap. I'm told it's the right one. You have to be careful when you're when you're putting that pole in. Sometimes the fork doesn't match into the groove, 
If you notice, you got a space underneath the cap here. You just have to play with it. But right now, what we have is a fully functional reel now. So that's uh, that's how you do a Shimano Bantam Corrado, circa 1992. But what we've done here, and, and with a couple of exceptions in terms of how you might take the side plate off and the like, uh, it's as easy as one, two, three in that regard in terms of being able to, uh, to get these off, get access to them, and, and correct them the right way. So that's it. I hope you uh, learned something from this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe, and please tell your fishing buddies to subscribe as we're trying to grow this channel. Uh, if you want to see more, uh, please stay tuned as I post frequently. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.